Hello and welcome to our interview with Jan Russ. Um, if you don't know, Jan is well, was the casting director on Neighbours for a huge amount of the show's history. The first 24 at least years, 24, 25 years. So anybody that came through those doors, um, she got them there. She was the one who brought them in. She was the one who chose them for the roles. So we're talking Jason, Kylie, over the 80s, straight through the 90s, right through the noughties until up to the end, 2008, 2009-ish. Uh, Margot Robbie probably being the last example of somebody that she's cast who went on to some amazing, amazing things. Um, Jan is incredible to talk to. She's very open, very honest. Um, I could chat to her for hours and hours and hours, and in fact we did. Um, this is a very long interview, which is why it's been broken up into at least two parts. Could well be three. Um, I haven't checked the overall running time yet, but um, it's not a long one. So this is part one. This will go into the 80s, uh, touch on the 90s, and then there'll be more coming uh, in the next one, including um, in part two, who Hugh Jackman um, was actually contracted to play, uh, which is a very interesting one. I didn't even know he was rumoured um, until somebody mentioned it on Twitter. But yeah, apparently he got a part and it's very interesting what part that was. So look for that in part two. Uh, do hit like and subscribe and suggest other people you'd like us to speak to from Neighbours as well. But for now, enjoy part one of our interview with the amazing Jana Russ. And as always, um, I'm Joe and I've been joined by Paul, the Neighbours guru. So we can get into the real ins and outs of Mabus history. Uh, it's a fun one, this. Enjoy. That's when good neighbors become good friends. This is my first time on Zoom. Uh, I've become a pro at it this year. <laughs> it's so I'm not sure I'm doing the now. right thing, but I obviously am now. Yep, yeah, no, you're all good. Uh, we did think about doing it with um, camera as well, but yeah, it's you don't have to do your hair or anything. It's great. Like, it's... Oh, and I've done myself up so much with all this corona hair and everything else. <laughs> good old corona hair. Like, how are you doing out there? Well, we're still in lockdown and, and our you know, bloody Premier um, decided not to ease anything today. We thought he was going to ease up and open a few things, but... Um, but no, he hasn't. So we're still in lockdown. It's been a long time, isn't it? It's been months, months, um, five months. This last, the second lockdown we've been in. That's mad. There's a there's a comedian from Melbourne, Adam Hills, who presents a show over here, and he was saying it's been yes. longer for you guys out there than it has in Wuhan, which is just nuts. Oh, it's 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 just ridiculous. It's 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 you know, power, yeah, power, so power, and. and you know, people are, are sick and tired of it, really. Um, okay. So, yeah, so you're doing all right, though, with the whole lockdown situation? All well, with the lockdown Japan. situation, I mean, it's a bit frustrating because you can't do anything, go anywhere, see anyone. Um, but uh, and nothing's open to go anywhere. You're allowed, we're now allowed to go 25 k's, but nothing's open anyway. Um, no restaurants, yeah, that's no good. shops. You can go further, but where like are you going to go? It's an exciting day to go to the doctor's. <laughs> that's when you know things are getting a bit grim isn't it exactly i had to go to the doctor's last week i said i'm so excited because i've been out i can come out it's like yeah i'm starting you to know? talk to people more in the supermarkets at the checkouts just because it's human well yes business. but everybody's everybody's wearing masks so you you can't recognize half of them and you can't talk to them anyway because you can't understand them with the mask on no and there's still that awkward thing isn't there where you smile at people as you walk past and then you realize that no i've just done a weird thing with my eyes they can't actually see that i'm smiling exactly exactly yes yes so bizarre. you're sort of thinking i hope they're reading my eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i always think i'm just doing some weird stare and i'm like no i'm smiling, I'm smiling at you, I um, so let's go back to 1985 then um wow yeah five years now um getting that first cast together for neighbours so what do you remember yep. about that and so what was the process of trying to cast it into that was show? that was in in um channel seven days or channel 10 days uh go right back to the beginning so yes i guess late nineteen eighty four. channel maybe. seven days and i can remember um getting a phone call from reg watson um from the office in sydney and saying um jen we're thinking of doing a new show mm. a new series and i'll send you down a couple of scripts and uh, I want you to put together a list of some actors. And so he said, I want you to read through the script. So he sent me the scripts down, about three or four of them. And uh, the working title of those was called Living Together. That's not quite as and happy, is it? Not quite as, you know, hasn't got that in, encapsulation of, of Neighbours. Neighbours had a bit more, but Living Together was the initial one. And so um, 
I read through those and then started making a list of actors. And, and what I wanted at the time was actors who had experience mm. and who, who didn't necessarily have a big profile or a profile because I wanted the experience. I, did, I wanted the, them all to be so new, fresh faces um, to the viewers because to me that makes them more believable to the viewers because if they see someone that they've seen on other shows, it's just that actor doing another role again, you know? Yeah, that can happen. Uh, so that was that was the initial premise of me putting those that cast together. So was, and obviously we had um, uh, you know a couple of a couple of uh, actors who had done things, but they because they were so darn good, um, it was wonderful to have them in the cast. I guess that's the likes of Alan Dale and Anne Haddy. Absolutely, yeah. Alan Dale actually uh, was second in line because. Um, Interesting. We'd already cast someone else in that role. So, do you remember and who that was? Because we've heard rumours. Yes, I, I'm just trying to remember his name. It was so long ago. I know. It's, and, it's and, and, and of course, <laughs> with this lockdown, I was saying to someone the other day, the brain goes into a bit of mishmash, you know. It I but, just went uh, on a long day this year. Yes, we were sitting. We are sitting having a get-together with the whole cast before we started working and John Holmes, the producer, and I were sitting there looking around at the cast, seeing just we wanted to see how they all work together because it's very important to have that teamwork that they all, you know, work yeah, together. Yeah, the camaraderie. And, and, and particularly the families. And we both at the same time turned to each other and said, that one's not working. It's, and That's said, so interesting right, that you can just tell that. Yeah, and so we've got to go, we've got to find someone else. So at that time, I think Alan um, had done uh, had done another show for Grundy's, and um, he we had said to the, said to Grundy's, look, maybe we'll, we'd like to look at Alan Dale for the role, and and um, they'd had a bit of a run in with him at some stage, and they said, oh, don't know, don't know, and we said, no, we really think that he's going to be right for that character. So anyway, they they agreed to it, and and so that's how Alan uh, got the role. And I mean, you were absolutely correct. Like. He was just encapsulated Jim Robinson from scene one. Didn't absolutely, he? absolutely. And even with Stefan Dennis, um, you know, when Stefan was sort of offered the role, he was a bit reluctant because uh, I think he, he'd been offered a movie or something. He didn't really feel that he wanted to do something like a soap. And then he decided to do it. And, and of course, the rest is history as far as Stefan is concerned. So we often have a laugh about that as well. I think the... Um, the movie was going to be like six weeks work and uh, and Neighbours has sort of been, you know, his life for him for years and years, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's literally mm. become his life. Jan, was it quite difficult to get Stefan to come back in 2005 based on that? Or was he, because the, the, really. the story goes that Alan was very instrumental in, in getting him back into the show. Oh, interesting. Yeah, really? Hmm. Okay. Um, I think Stefan <laughs> back... <laughs> I'm not going to go against anyone I'm not saying, but um, I think Stefan was back in Australia. Um, and that's, you know, that's how he was sort of offered the, uh, the job again. Um, so with the rest so of that early cast, um, did yeah. everybody kind of just work at once, apart from obviously you said um, the Alan Dale had to come in, but with the rest of them, were you just like, yep, yeah, this is a great cast from the yeah, off? they did. did. Well? That's, 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 as I said to you, we had a, um, a get together after we'd sort of cut, made, you know, the decisions on the casting and had a get together and, and uh, just a social get together because, you know, just wanting to see how they, you know, mingled and got on together and, and seeing as particularly for the families, we wanted to see how the families sort of if they sort of integrated and worked together as well. And, and that's where, um, yeah, everybody did, except that one, uh, the, the initial Jim Robinson, when we sort of went, oh, my God, I think we've made a mistake on this one. And, um, <clears throat> and the other one, of course, who always used to come to me, and, and is, was, sadly, was Francis Bell. And um, he came to me and he said, Jan, he said, you're the only one that's ever cast me as a, as a real Aussie um, 
Aussie bloke, you know, because he was actually a very terribly, terribly well-spoken Kiwi. Mm. He very, did very, things about all very English, very English, very well-spoken, you know, and to hear him, you know, and, um, but sadly he, uh, he had a few uh, problems, Francis, and um, I think he jumped off a building. Yeah, that's, and um, suicide. that's mm. what we hear. The thing with Francis though, is obviously Max was such a brash character. Oh, you're the third person that we've spoken to now. And yeah, everybody said that, that he's just the loveliest, per- he was just the loveliest person. He was, he was quite eccentric. Sometimes he'd, he'd be riding down the street with his umbrella up if it was raining, riding his bike. <laughs> you know, he was, yeah. he was sort of, he, he had a bit of eccentricity about him in, in his, as a, you know, in his life, yeah. But he was a, a really, um, a really gentle, caring, lovely man. Yeah, yeah. And Dasha, Dasha Blahova, of course, played his wife. And that was a good combination. Yep. That yep. was a very good combination. Yep. I mean... You, yeah, obviously, you were, you were hired to be the casting director for a reason, because that first cast was just spot on. Like, in fact, for the well, first... Exactly. That's, that's, that's why they wanted me to do it, to sort of set that up. And that's, as I said to you before, what I initially wanted with the cast was to get a, a you know, a, a group of actors who had the experience and who had worked but didn't have a profile. Because my philosophy is that... Um, the audience will believe an actor more if he's not a well-known one or that they've seen playing so many different roles on different networks, you know? Yeah, it certainly takes a lot less time to invest in them as somebody else if you don't know them, doesn't it? Exactly, because they, 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 they're drawn in. The audience is drawn in a lot more to believe the characters and people. And, and so much so that, you know, um, poor old Vivian Grey had... Um, you know, people believed her to be Mrs. Mangle. Which is yeah, not the best person you, you want to be believed as, is it? <laughs> well, exactly. She was the most beautiful, gentlest of women, the loveliest of ladies. And, uh, you know, I mean, she, she was so distraught because she had, you know, stones being thrown on her roof in the middle of the night and, you know, people calling out abuse and all that sort of thing. So it was very hard for her because she was such a gentle soul. You know, but that was the character she played, she's and uh, and, well. and the public sort of believed that that's who she was. Mm. It's, I guess, in a way, it's a testament to how good she was. Uh, the at the same time, but absolutely, she was a wonderful, wonderful actress, and and that's you know, you know, I'm very proud of of the actors that I uh, cast in 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 that time because they were actors, they knew their craft, and. Uh, you know, they'd studied and worked on their craft. So they, you know, uh, and, and they worked together as a team, which, you know, I, I think that's so important, you know. So let's... Jan, with the, um, with, with the character of, of Mrs Mangle leaving, was it, was it intentional then that subsequent characters like Edith Chubb uh, and um, Hilary Robinson were kind of brought in to play that, that kind of busybody role. Yes, yes, yes. Because I mean, I think it um, every every sort of every sort of soapy or whatever needs that sort of a a character. Mm. And we found that with with Mrs. Mangle's character, which was hugely successful, even though people sort of you know did those terrible things to the to the actress herself. Um, those sort of characters bring another sort of level to to the show, and. Um, it's it's important to have them, yeah, yeah. So those, those those others were brought in for that reason, totally. So let's go to the Channel Ten move then. So Channel Seven to Channel Ten. Um, yes. What were sort of were you told at that point about the cast? Because obviously there was a lot of changes. Were you essentially there were a few to changes there? Redo well, we were initially told that um, you know the show was being cancelled um, because the um, ratings weren't great, da 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 da, all that sort of thing. And we literally at that time outside the studio had fans standing there with black armbands and, and red roses or red carnations, I think they were, uh, because they were distraught that the show was being axed. Wow. And then we thought, oh, well, that's, that's the end of the show. We think, oh, my God, you know, that's, that's it, we're finished. But then we got word that there could be a possibility of a bit of interest from somewhere. So I can remember the, the producer, John Holmes, and myself, and the associate producer, were in my office, um, 
sitting there with a bottle of champagne, waiting for a phone call, waiting to hear if, you know, someone was going to take it. I'm just waiting and, to open that champagne. Oh, I was dying to open that champagne. <laughs> and the, uh, the phone call came and we were told, yes, Channel 10 are picking it up. So, of course, champagne popped. Uh, we did have to uh, get some new characters. And that's where um, Jason Donovan came in. Uh, so we've actually had a question on Twitter about that, actually, about sort of the, sort of, I don't know how much you can go into, but the reason for that recast. Um, well, I originally it. auditioned Jason. So oh, and for, the, for Scott? Beforehand, yes. Ah. yes. And, um, and had offered him a role because at that time he was still at school. Mm. And offered him a role, and he went to Terry, and 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 Terry and he had discussion, and 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 Jason came back to me and said, "Look, you know, Dad and I have talked about it, and and I've got to finish my HSC. You know, it's great that you know been offered the role, but I've got to finish my HSC." I said, "Look, okay, that's fine. I understand. I'll keep you in mind. Anything comes up when you finish your HSC, that's that's you know, I'll get in touch with you." No, so no. basically, that's what happened. Yep. So when this character came up and I knew he'd finished his HSC, I went straight to Jason and said, okay, do you want to, you know, do you want to play this character? And, uh, and that's how that came about. And with recasts in general, because um, Neighbours is quite known for, well, in fact, most soaps are known for doing recasts, but not necessarily looking to cast somebody who looks the same. So what was your mindset when you were recasting a role as big as somebody like Scott or like Julie or Lucy? Well, it's 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 not easy to do. You've got you don't always get them to look alike. You can't always get them to look the same. But there's got to be something there that is has a similarity to the previous actor performer mm. and what they're doing. You know, um, that you, you have to find that something there. You can't just sort of go, oh, I'll use that person because then they'll just yeah you know, fill them into the role yeah. because it doesn't work. You've got to find that something that is 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 there that people will find some sort of connection straight away with that they had with the previous character. Um, it's not easy, but I think once you get someone that uh, you know, like a, a Jason, I think you know it's in in that age group. Uh, he was a good-looking guy, uh, but he also had. You know, there was something else there. There was a deeper talent there that one could see. That's, and yeah, I mean, it definitely was. He's still doing well now, isn't he? Oh, look, I'm so proud of him. I think he's done an amazing job. And, you know, I know he's gone through tough times. And we've all gone through tough times in our lives. And maybe and, uh, it's been in his family, isn't it? Even to this day. He has come out the gone. other side and he has proven himself a hundred times over. And... I, I'm just so proud of him. I just think he's done a fantastic job. Yes. Now, we can't speak about Jason without speaking about somebody else. Um, oh, of course. Fairly obvious who we're going with. But um, tell us about uh, Kylie, when you first met her, first got her on the show. So well, was... Kylie, um, she came in to audition for me um, for, a, for that role. And, and interestingly enough, Annie Jones auditioned for the same role at the time. So uh, Kylie uh, came into, I, I think she's, she would, she just finished um, school as well. And um, it's, it's, she was just this shy little young girl. And um, as I always say to someone, I was auditioning her and I looked at the monitor and I went, oh my God, it was like seeing, a, like, um, you know, it's hard to explain, but like seeing a little rosebud starting to <clears throat> open. And I thought, oh my God, there's something, there's something here with this one. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's interesting you say sort of she was quite a quiet person as well, because um, Charlene was the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Well, she certainly injected some <coughs> life. <into her. coughs> I'm just having a water at the moment. It's... She was very, um, yeah, she was very quiet. Oh God. Oh, um, you're right. Oh God, you always get these things in one of these, don't you? I was going to say, please, I mean, if, if you did die on this, it would do great for our numbers, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, from what, you, what you, you saw face to face, and then what you saw on the monitor, 
she has this wonderful um, connection on screen. And, you know, I've, it's, it's been the million dollar question that so many journalists have said to me, what's the answer? What is it? And I said, but it's something that you cannot explain. It's a sort of like a, an animal magnetism. It's a, um, an inner quality that someone has that comes through that screen. And a lot of people don't have it. Kylie had it. Certainly did. And it's still got it. That team group, that whole group of the characters, the infamous team group that Neighbours sort of used to do so well, was started with them, didn't it, really? With Scott, Charlene, Jane, Mike. Well, they were, and Guy. Yeah, Guy, Guy Pierce, Pierce, that's another one we should talk about. Guy was always a dark horse. I think he'd done a, he'd done a commercial, a Mars bar commercial, I think, before he came in to see me. And he was another sort of quiet one. I always thought to myself, you know, Guy was a bit of a dark horse because um, he was very quiet. He was very um, <clears throat> focused on his work, as, as were Jason and Kylie. I mean, they, those kids worked so hard and, and, you know, they deserved everything that they got um, because they did work so hard. And a lot of the kids these days don't. They think it's just all going to happen, you know. Mm. Um, and they think they're going to be another Kylie and Jason or, or Guy. And you go, well, no, because these guys work their bums off for everything that they've achieved. You can kind and of tell it, who does and who doesn't, I think, with sort of how they do it. Like Margot Robbie is another one. Who Margot I, Robbie, like, yep, yep. She, uh, she uh, her agent uh, rang me to say she was in town and she just finished a show Would I see her. And uh, so I said, yes, I'm, you know, come and see me. And so I sent my assistant to go and get her to bring her down. <clears throat> and I can mem remember looking up and seeing Margot walking towards me. And I thought, oh, I think I've got something here, you know. And, and uh, so I got her an audition. I thought, well, yeah, here's another one. And she was once again very focused in what she was doing and in her you know, acting and all of that sort of thing. And it's it's a quality that's that those kids then had, you know. Um, I, well, you do see it a little bit now, not as much because I think they think it's all just going to happen. Uh, but they were they were dedicated and focused in 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 what they wanted to do, where they wanted to go, and and loved their craft. It's, and wanted to learn as much as possible. You must feel a lot of, obviously there's a lot of factors that's got them to where they are, but you must feel a lot of pride in sort of helping them get to there. Because obviously Margot Robbie's taken the entertainment world by storm now. So obviously Jason and Kylie, yeah, well, that is largely kind of down to you for getting them onto Neighbours. Well, that's, that's sort of giving them that, you know, first step and, and you know, it, it was fantastic. And at that, you know, at that time too, we were all such a family. Mm. Um you know, cast and crew, and we were we were a real, a real strong family presence. We were there with each other all the time, um, and it was it was a wonderful it was a wonderful feeling, and and that you know obviously that feeling creates success as well. You know, if there's a bad apple, that that causes the the you know a bit of cancer and it grows. But when you don't have that, it's the most incredible experience. And we were um, we were very fortunate to have such an incredible cast but it was a matter of you know people say to me oh how do you do and I said well it was a matter of being like a jigsaw puzzle putting a jigsaw puzzle together you know you've got to get mm -hmm. the right ones to sort of fit into the right space and to fit in with the other the other person that they're working with um unfortunately I don't see that a lot these days they seem to be all doing their own little tap dance on screen uh but uh, yeah, well, we will I, get to modern neighbours. That's important. That you know, they 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 must gel and and, and work together. You know, um, and and as I say, we did back then. It was it was the most um, amazing time because it was a real a real total family feeling. Yeah. Or well, have you got any more eighties questions to go? Because obviously, we've got twenty five years worth of your time on the show to try and touch bases on. Oh yeah, so we're going to have to fly through. But <laughs> anything from the eighties you wanted to ask? I'm only twenty three. My God, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry to burst the bubble. <laughs> I noticed, uh, Jan, that what's kind of like a fun trivia thing that your son actually was the original 
Michael Martin back in eighty five. Yes, yes. Oh wow, well, I didn't know that. Yep, he was. He now, by the way, is a huge celebrity in South Korea. Oh, as wow. are my two as are my two grandsons. My two grandsons, um, each one of them has over a million uh followers on Instagram. Wow. What do they do? Um, they're there? both they're both huge. Uh, Sam and uh, and my two grandsons are, are, are huge in in South Korea. What is it they do? They're on a show at the moment called Return of Superman. It's a television series. It's a great name. And and uh, Sam was on a show for three three or two years called Real Men, which was he was uh, a celebrity in the Korean Army. But um, yeah, the Koreans have have flown over to Australia three times to film here. Um, wow, the return that's of the and 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 I'm 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 now Nana um, to all of Asia. <laughs> cool. That must be an expensive Christmas. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, there won't be one this year because we won't be. I won't be seeing them. Well, yeah, that's a very good point. I'm kind of looking forward to the nice quiet Christmas in a way this year. But um, yeah, no, that is a shame. Yes, yes, um, yes. yes but he was the original. Um, yeah, the original Michael in in the show. Yeah. That was funny. Speaking of recast, that whole family was recast, wasn't it? When they um, that's right. Yes. In fact, that segues us in, I guess, to sort of the early nineties. Now that Neighbours went through its fairly first big change, I guess, after the seven to ten switch around sort of ninety two. Sort of the tone and everything of it all changed. You got the new opening credits, the new cast. Um, what do you kind of remember about that time? Because there was a lot of turnover between sort of ninety two and ninety four. There, there was days. because you know. It's interesting because each time we had a new producer, they all wanted to sort of put a their own spin on it, and uh, or you know, a new producer, new executive producer, they all wanted to put their own sort of spin on the show, and um, so I think that had a lot to do with it at the time. They wanted to sort of you know uh, update, update it. I think they call it, don't they? Yes, I guess a refresh, a revamp. Yes, yes. Would be the word of it. But do you remember if there was any reason why sort of the cast was in particular in that point, sort of turning over as quickly as they were? Because you had people like Benito and Kathy Alessi who were in it for like uh, around a year, I guess, and lots of other oh, characters. Oh, that's right, that... the Alessi family. Yeah, they were in it for about a year. And I think, you know, I think they found that. I think also round about that time, they started doing all of these, um, uh, oh God, what do you call them, you know, people having their opinions and all that sort of thing, you know? Mm. And, and and I think they found that, you know, they said, oh, some of those characters aren't as popular as what they should be. Was that frustrating for you in a way that they weren't being given sort of the time really to embed themselves? Well, absolutely, with the audience? because I think, you know, the public always needs time to, to get to know the characters and the families and all of that sort of thing, you know? They, they develop over a period of time. Um, and, 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 you know, I mean, that's the same with any any, um, actor in a role, mm. particularly in a soap, it, it takes a while for those characters to develop and the audience to sort of get to to like them. So it was a bit, a little bit, um, a little bit frustrating. Yeah, I guess for you, you were kind of getting them in there, sort of helping to build this character up, and then before you know it, they're gone. That's you know, right, like, exactly. Great. Yeah, but yeah. We sort of quite randomly talk about the Alessis, but sort of George Bartles who played Benita. I think it was George Bartles. Oh, that's right, you know. George. Yes, it's fantastic comedic actor who I think only sort of now looking back at his scenes, I'm realizing how fantastic he actually was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was great to have, you know, once again someone like George in a show. Actually, George and I had worked together years ago in a show, show called Godspell, <clears throat> and we toured uh, New Zealand, and. Um, so yes, so I, I had worked with. Oh no, I did. Um, I didn't do that. I did um, South Pacific with him. That's right. Yeah. So um, yes, I have a bit of a background in different things. I've done. I have had a few different lives, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Was his neighbours still to think sort of the biggest? Would you say? Well, that's taken most of my most of the years of my life. Yeah, twenty four years, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Twenty four, twenty five, wasn't it? 24, 25 years, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's taken, a, and and before that, I was uh, casting prisoner for the last eighteen months, two years. I mean, another show that's not exactly a small one, is it? That's another. Oh, well, no, huge show. Huge. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and still, still popular. Yeah, still popular. Isn't that again with the reboot as well? 
Um, there was a lot yep. of actors that came over from prison that wasn't there to neighbours. Was, did you have a lot of involvement in that of being like, well, let's look at like Jackie Woodburn or? No, because there was that time where everybody was going to London for the pantomimes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. You know, there's the pantomime. Every year they want time off to go to the pantos. And in fact, we got to a stage where we had to say, look, we can't let you go because otherwise we'd have no cast. <laughs> there was a lot over here, especially at that sort of time, I guess. Not this That's year, right. probably, but... And that was during the 80s, uh, that 80s sort of period as well, I think, wasn't it? And, uh, but yes, they were, they were heading over for those pantos, like, you know, every year. So, um, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them did that, yeah. Jan, can I ask, in terms of Home and Away, because there is... there. There was something many years ago said about the fact that Neighbours' future was was in jeopardy because of the success of Home and Away. Was was it ever that much of a threat to the show? No, no, no. I don't believe so. Never. Yeah. No. Neighbours was first and foremost before Home and Away. Uh, it it and and Home and Away is a different. Um, type of so I mean it's set on the beach and with all of that sort of thing and it's the premise with with neighbours as Reg Watch and was families being together supporting and helping each other and that was the basis of neighbours. Yeah. Which I guess which is, is what, what what is what a Melbourne community was, you know. Mm. There's there's been times over the show, obviously because you were there and you saw you knew Reg and you knew that initial mandate for what the show was. Were there points over the show, sort of while you were on it, I guess after is a bit different, that you saw it veering away from what it was originally supposed to be? And sort of how was oh, that God, for you yeah. to try and sort of get your voice across to see if we could rein it back? Well, it's it's hard sometimes. As I say, each producer or executive producer would come in and want to put their mark on it and try and change things. So it was it was, it was hard. So, it, I mean, sometimes I, I thought the show went off in you know, different directions to where it was supposed to be going. Um, and it's sometimes got a little bit lost along the way. Uh, and then they tried to, you know, then, you know, they tried to sort of rein it in again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's amazing that it's, it's lasted as long as it has. Yeah. 35 years is, it's a long time. It's a long time. And I just think that um, it's, it's changed so much from yeah. what its original concept was and what Reg Watson wanted it to be. Again, we will, as I say, we will touch on, on the later days. Let's go back to the 90s again. Have you got anything from the early 90s, Paul? I just wonder what your feelings were regarding the, uh, the bit of the controversial family, the land family that uh, moved in. Um, and the infamous where Julie believes that uh, they've cooked uh, the family dog. Oh, Jenny Lee. Um, yeah. So I just wanted, in, in, in retrospect, do you think that was perhaps one of those directions that the show probably shouldn't have taken? I think, that, I think so. Mm, mm, mm. It was um, yeah, I think, Julie Mullins. I think that, that might have been sort of pushing the envelope perhaps a little too, too far. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the ideas sort of came from other shows. I mean, Neighbours has always been um, critiqued about the fact that it doesn't feature enough uh, ethnic characters. And I know they've addressed diversity and, and, mm. and so on recently, but did you feel pressure from the network that you couldn't be introducing? Um, yeah, no, I introduced, well, I introduced Dasha Blahova from the very beginning. Yes, yeah, right, right. And that was a uh, was that a conscious choice to to do that no, to go down. I found her, and I thought she was a wonderful actress and right for the role. So I pushed yeah. for her. And um, do you remember um, Tony Briggs, who who was uh, in the show during the time with uh, Guy and and um, yep. yeah, played Pete and, Baxter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and he's uh, Aboriginal, very dark guy. Um, he played that. He he was. I, I put him in the role. Um, I put, uh, you know, I had Italian actors in there, um, Greek actors, um, Pablo Castro as well. Asian actors. Um, you know, I, I I it didn't make any difference to me yeah. uh, of the nationality. And and suddenly, you know, they were saying, oh, well, there's no diversity and all that. And I made it. I actually made a list at one time, 
and I got everybody to, you know, for their nationalities to, and, and there was yeah. quite a few. Quite yeah. A few. yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you go through, yeah. It's, it's a, always about, and, and I bought the Chalang over from New Zealand, uh, uh, you know, beautiful Asian yeah, actor. Wonderful actor. And uh, so to me, it was talent. It's a witch. Talent is what it's all about. Brings me neatly onto another point, another kind of point of contention on Neighbours over the years. There were, I'm not going to name any, any names, I'm going to try not to, but there are some people that kind of came into the show that weren't from an acting background. And it was kind of obvious on the screen that it wasn't from an acting background. Was that pressure mm -hmm. put on you to like, no, we want this person in because they look yes. like yes. this? I was, how was I that was, as a casting agent? I, I was very strongly pressured with that. Um, I fought against it. Greatly, I thought you uh, because I, you know, because what I had created was, you know, some good, good, good actors, good, good, solid acting cast um, who knew their craft, and and then I, I was forced into putting these other people into the show because it was um, a bit of a cross crossover from other shows that that network was having mm. that they wanted that you know person so that uh yeah that did happen and you know what it still happens today yes yeah and again you can tell like you can tell on the screen and it shows up on screen you know terribly it's... yeah you know it's once again it's it's you know it's today because i i have a bugbear about it you know it's it's people who are you know personality or they've been on a reality show or you know how many hits they've got on their on their their line or something like that and you go you know what about talent talent is the most important thing you know because i think it's different isn't it with the younger cast member who may be a little bit shaky when they start like it's acceptable because you know there's something there and that they will grow into the role and they will grow into the craft. But when it's sort of an adult that comes in and you're like, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Like it yeah. must be. But also, I mean, I, even with the young ones, you have to, you know, you, you, you can't have them too shaky to start off with really. No. Um, because it's, it's not a, you know, it's a professional industry. It's not a learning, you know, it's not a school, mm. it's not a drama school. Yeah. Uh, Although you know a lot of the, a lot of young ones have learned through there, but they've, you know, to me when I was I was casting the young ones, they always had an ability to start off. Um, one was um, Craig, who who was a bit sort of um, wooden for the first six weeks, and we sort of thought, oh God, no, he's not working. Uh, so that was a bit of, and then he's then he suddenly relaxed and and got into the role. He just started being him, so that sort of worked. But uh, it, it's very important that you know you can't just get them on their look and and because they can sort of you know walk and talk and not fall over the furniture. Uh, they've got to have a bit of talent behind yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that's I, I just get on my I just get a bit angry these days with what I see. That's all. It is. In fact, so do you still watch the show? I'm obviously, I'm, I'm guessing you don't watch it religiously now, but do you still sort of check into it? From no, time I, time? I, you know, now and again, I, I, I might sort of, you know, pass it over. I see promos, mm. you know, and um, it's, uh, it's sort of like, I think I don't even know what it's about anymore. It's, yeah, it's, a, I mean, they have just done the 35th. I don't know if you saw that, but quite a lot of older faces did come back for that one. Right. No, I didn't. I didn't see it. I did. I did hear that uh, a few of them came back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you had Bruce. Uh, I've got to remember now. Bruce Samazan Bruce was Samazan. one of them. Yeah. Um, who ran and became that. Melissa Bell's obviously been coming back quite a lot. But um, it's, yeah. So I guess you t you look at it every now and then. But do you still see anything when you do see glimpses of it of the old show? Or do you just think it's just moved on so no, much? No, really. I think it's you know, yeah. Uh, it sounds you know, it's terrible. But I, it's, I see there's so many different levels of performance. As well, yeah. you know, um, and it's it's yes, it's not it's certainly not the same show. And it, it always fun. feels like in in the early days there was a bit of an acting dynasty that you know Absolutely. the likes of Anne Hattie and Anne Charleston yep. and all these fabulous yep. actresses yep. and actresses that had a massive theatrical background. And yep. I do wonder whether we we have that today to pull upon. We don't actually. Is that you, Paul? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's one of my things because, and that was you know one of the things of initially setting up 
the cast and finding that were those who had that background in theatre because that is so important and that's something you guys over there have. Um, and, and we don't have a lot of that. See, a lot of them on the soapies these days may do a, you know, a six-week course or a three-month course or a six-month course, acting course or something, and they're thrown into a show. Um, so they don't have that, you know, the unwritten laws. They don't know, you know, they don't know sort of a lot of the rules and of things of working in the industry. Um, as I always say, there's always unwritten laws that you don't know anything about unless you've you've worked as in the acting industry and you've worked in theatre and all that sort of thing and you understand you know more about what you should do with your character and and your development of your character and your research of your character uh whereas a lot of them these days come in and learn their lines and that's it yeah, yeah they just take it off face value i guess rather than trying to dig into Absolutely. who that person is yeah yep. yep. um, right. and and you know, it's it's very important that an actor is a listening actor because, you know, you look at their eyes and if the eyes aren't there and the eyes are blank and there's no one home, you go, oh, right, okay, turn off. Um, and again, so I guess for the other actors as well to, to try and act against that. Exactly, exactly. It's thing. very hard. Yeah. Because right. you're not getting anything from them. You need that that connection. You know, as I talked about before, you need you need the connection with the actor another actor um, when you're working with them. <laughs>